Welcome to Generations, a show which helps people 50 and better lead happy, healthy, and productive lives. Hosted today by Diane Winkler, and here's Diane. Welcome to Generations, the wonderful story of wonderful people. My name is Diane Winkler, and I'll be your host today. And I'd like to have our group introduce themselves. And uh, Jeannie, would you please introduce yourself? I would. My name is Jeannie Rogers, and I'm your co-host. And would Professor Ogami <laughs> please <laughs> introduce himself? I'm Bill Cosgrove, also known as Professor Origami. And this is our very special guest for today. And we are going to learn something that I don't think any, the two of us have ever done before. Mm -hmm. And what would you like to, s to start with? What is, would you want to tell us a little we're, bit about? We're going to start with origami. Uh, the origami is on the table there. Okay. Origami is the ancient art of paper folding. And I'm going to challenge you to follow along as we actually do some paper folding um, this afternoon. Now, Bill, all of these animals and everything here mm -hmm. are all paper folded? This is origami. Is? These are wow. uh, works of origami that I folded, some of them just last night. And we're going to fold one uh, right now, right in front of you. Okay. It's called a passenger pigeon. We're going to start What's with this? a couple of folds, and we're going to try to do them all at the same time. Okay. Oh boy. This is the passenger pigeon. This is what we will come out passenger. with. Passenger. Oh, all right. Wow. Where did that get its name? And we are doing passenger pigeons because okay. passenger pigeons are presently uh, extinct, and it's oh. been 100 years since the last one died. So they've been mm -hmm. extinct for 100 years, and uh, we are commemorating that extinction, you might say, by folding one million passenger pigeons mm -hmm. out of paper, origami passenger pigeons, by the end of the year. And we are presently at, as of last time I checked this morning, uh, 761,283 mm -hmm. <laughs> on the site sponsored, uh, that, uh, sponsored by uh, putting the paper out and doing the passenger pigeons, the Lost Bird Project. Mm -hmm. And they have an initiative called um, Fold the Flock, Dot org, by the way, those of you who uh, have a computer right now, go to fold, foldtheflock.org. You can find that count of 761,000. And you can uh, learn all about why we are doing this. We're going to have a million of them by the end of the year, and the ones we're going to fold right now are going to contribute to that. Oh, yay. So yeah. we're going to kind of mix it all, uh, all together for the next few minutes, and we're going to start with a piece of paper like this that we are going to fold in from the sides, down the center. And I have to do it on the table because we need a uh, relatively hard surface. Two quick folds like that. And then do the other wing as well so that we end up with something that's very much like a kite, mm -hmm. if we're lucky. Yep. That's what the first fold looks like. Yep. Like a kite. Now this is the bird's face, so we want to fold that back. Fold it back. As though you're breaking its neck. Mm. Folding the head back on the back on the back of the bird. So we have something oh. like an inverted V you may say you might say with mm -hmm. his head down his back and the poor mm -hmm. fellow has a broken neck, oh, perhaps. Um, I should say that the last passenger pigeon uh, died in 1914 in the Cincinnati Zoo, mm -hmm. and she was all alone. She was the last one. She had never been in the wild, mm -hmm. and she was trembling and fearful, the last of her species. So that's what we're commemorating in a way. So we're folding a kind of, uh, her name was, by the way, was Martha, oh, Martha, Martha the passenger pigeon. We're kind of commemorating her now. So this is where we are now. Now we're going to make a couple more folds. We're going to fold these corners down like this. Following the lines on this paper provided by the Lost Bird Project. With the lines, the diagram, the colors, these beautiful colors, as you've noticed, mm -hmm. so that we're ending up with another kind of smaller kite. Mm -hmm. Looking at it this way, mm -hmm. and you look at it this way, you have, whoops, put that, uh, yeah, Wait. put those corners the other way. The other way. Yeah, huh? the other way. 
so that we have two sides like this. And then we're going to do the tricky, uh, the, the only tricky fold in this whole process. By the way, passenger pigeons, while I'm doing this, passenger pigeons in our country in the 19th century were among, uh, were uh, numbered in the billions, the oh billions. 3.7 billion passenger pigeons flew over Ontario, Canada, in the middle, uh, 10 years after the Civil War in this country. 3.7 billion birds. Oh my word. Okay, now we're going to do one last, we're going to do the, the difficult fold. This is the one where the corner comes down. So that we end up with something like this, which kind of looks like it's wings, but it isn't really actually. Mm -hmm. So I, how about if I finish this one? You finish and that then one I'll and help, help you, us. You. <laughs> the, uh, Please. I, I'm going to make the, the uh, passenger pigeon's feet now. By, 19, by 1890, after the, uh, the uh, 3.7 billion passenger pigeons flew overhead, by 1890, the pigeons were almost completely gone. Mm. The last pigeon in the wild in this country was killed in 1900 by a boy who simply shot him, I guess. That's, that's oh, what we yeah. believe. Oh, yeah. But there were pigeons in the zoos, and that's mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. our Martha died 14 years later. That's why we're mm -hmm. celebrating the centennial now. Okay, so we're almost yes. ready to give you the final version. I have to make two more folds for give the body a little bit of dimension <laughs> and to separate the body from the tail. And we have Voila, when you fold it in half like this, like a sandwich, mm -hmm. okay. we have this. Except that whoop, his face is sort of facing up. He's dr if it has a yeah. sudden rainstorm, he'll probably drown. So we have to do something about that. Okay. Mm -hmm. We fold the beak rather quickly here. There's a couple of quick folds here. Open it up. Push Tuck it down. It Tuck that's it in. Now, yeah, that's right. That's a good... That's that a good is thing. Amazing. Tuck it down a little bit, and there we are. Very beautiful. Martha, oh Martha too, you might say. Mm -hmm. And okay. we are destined to make a million of these to commemorate the billions of passenger pigeons that were decimated in the 19th century by us. We, as their only main predator, we uh, decimated the huge flocks. Mm -hmm. Uh, by, as I've said, 19, 1900 in the wild. Mm -hmm. um, the the uh, websites involved here are the Lost Bird Project. They created fold um, the flock org, and they provided this paper to do exactly that. And you know, for our viewers, what is so amazing is that not only is this paper perfect to create the finished oh, bird yes. when you're done, but there I are lines all over it so that so once that you know, and this is where we right. need you, we need you to tell us what do we fold first, what do we fold next, but and the lines are already on the paper once right. you know what to and do. And the colors, uh, they see, did a yes. wonderful job it's of organizing it that way. Beautiful. I'll finish yours if you want me to while, while we're, that would be great. While we're, we're talking. Okay. Yes. I got you, you got so it. far, and then you got it. I got yeah, it. Yeah, you got it very good. Now, here's the difficulty. Here's the difficult fold. Uh, I should mention, too, by the way, that uh, scientists believe we can de-extinct passenger pigeons. We can de-extinct, if you'll pardon the word. The extinction, D, that is, reverse the extinction of passenger pigeons, and I suppose at the same time, woolly mammoths, uh, saber-toothed tigers, and we do that with, you've heard of the Genome Project, with DNA. They take DNA from a preserved specimen, such as Martha, who has been stuffed, and she's in the, uh, the Smithsonian Institute of Natural History, take some of her DNA, mix it with uh, material from the, the passenger pigeon's closest cousin, which is the band-tailed, one of them is a band-tailed pigeon, and they will be able to recreate wow. a passenger pigeon just from the DNA. That's amazing. And as you know, it takes very little DNA to do that today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, there may be some arguments against that, mm -hmm. um, but they believe they can do it, and they probably will. Mm -hmm. They probably will. What uh, kind of an argument would you say? Against it? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, 
what would be the urgency for us to save creatures from becoming extinct if we knew, well, the scientists can just recreate it. So we might not protect species because they can be recreated, mm -hmm. presumably by scientists. Oh. Although that's still in the formative stages. We don't know what will happen. And the second argument is, if little baby Martha, DNA Martha, is reborn uh, into the first DNA-created passenger pigeon, Who's going to teach her how to be a pigeon? Absolutely. Well, She's the last one. Mm -hmm. And uh, pigeons, like most animals, like most creatures, mm -hmm. are not just the product of the DNA, mm -hmm. of the genome. Mm -hmm. They are, there is what science experts in pigeons call imprinting. Yes. yes. And uh, the only ones that can Im imprint what a passenger pigeon must do, what a passenger pigeon is, mm -hmm. is the pigeon's parents. Mm -hmm. So poor mm -hmm. Martha, mm -hmm. DNA genome Martha, would suddenly be created and would not know how to be a pigeon. <laughs> Presumably, that's yeah, the idea. Yeah. But, but, th but it's a fascinating field, of course, and we just we don't know what will happen. We have to, I suppose, do it before we know. Mm -hmm. I think it's exciting. Oh, I do. Goodness I do, too, but we don't want to end up with a bunch of Marthas. Mm -hmm. She we died of fear, trembling all alone. She mm -hmm. had no companions, mm -hmm. and it, she wasn't really a, a passenger pigeon. Sure, she was in sure. a zoo. Yeah, that's okay. right. There's yours. Isn't that wonderful? They are... E they are Easy to make with, in, with now, instructions. You've and got fun something to make. there that flies. Show us what you've got. Oh, the, well, th uh, this doesn't exactly fly, but it is appropriate to Halloween. This is a flappy bat. This is origami. Isn't that I fun? Isn't isn't that fun? It you is. give these to a class of kids, 20, 25, 30 kids, and have them all flap up at the same time, you can imagine how much noise they would oh, make. Oh, I can't imagine. And then show us this one, this too. One. This, one. this one does something, too. Isn't this amazing? This is the flapping bird. This is the classic flapping bird. This is what okay. I normally teach my students in oh my, my workshops Do that as again. Professor Origami. Isn't that something? I get them to, to, to make one of these in about 30, 35, 40 minutes. Oh Although God. I can make it in three or four minutes, but to teach you there's something else, and there are some difficult folds. I can mm -hmm. see that. Mm -hmm. There are some Absolutely. difficult folds, but Especially it's really that fun. Work. It's oh one God. of the it's few amazing. pieces of origami that moves. Mm -hmm. wow. These days, high tech has created all kinds of exotic origami pieces, but mm -hmm. low tech for, um, for me, the low tech nature of it is what I like. Mm -hmm. A piece of paper, in your hands. That's Isn't it. Isn't that amazing? And here, look at this gorgeous <laughs> zebra. Beautiful. And there's... Zebra? And there's a giraffe. giraffe? That's a giraffe. Mm -hmm. Isn't that great? Kind of looks like a zebra, though. Certainly does. It? does. <laughs> Certainly does. All Kern dragons, those very colorful things out oh, in the front there. Oh, is this and a that's an alligator. Mm -hmm. That's an alligator? Yep. Yes, oh and look at the feet, everything. Oh. It's just, a, just amazing. What is this little When you bit? think about oh, seniors, <laughs> Bill, when oh, you think bit. about seniors, what you would love to do is see seniors doing this, doing mm. wonderful things with their hands and feeling really proud of themselves Absolutely. when they have Bill to help them. <laughs> right? I'm hoping that I'll, I'll be able to do that sort of thing. I have the paper. I have, I have plenty of this paper. In fact, I have some bigger paper. I've made bigger ones. Is there a big one here? Oh, there's a big there's one right in front of you right there. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a flapping bird. Oh. There's a bigger bird. There's a bigger oh, passenger a, pigeon. Yes, this is bigger yes. than the others. Oh, yeah. I here, see. Here's a flapping bird. That's the biggest flapping bird I've oh, ever seen. My word. One that's of my amazing. grandchildren made this out of, I don't know, two or three pieces of paper that he put together. I'm <laughs> very, <laughs> very <laughs> impressed. Oh. And, and I think what? they would laugh and they would have happy times and they would pretend Absolutely. that they're up in the sky and... Oh. All the wonderful things that you are doing mm -hmm. to make people happy. Yes, well, glad, glad to hear it. Oh. On foldtheflock.org, when you get to the numbers and you can see how many have been folded, uh, one of the top ones as of this morning was is Professor Origami and Grandkids. And I just oh. put 50, uh, 50 of the um, passenger pigeons into the, the ledger, into the count that they're <laughs> taking, yes. and that's what gave us 761,283, mm -hmm. if I've got that number correct. Wow. So I can't even picture that. <laughs> so <laughs> many. <laughs> You've I, done a wonderful I'm, um, job. I, I'm looking for opportunities to, to teach this and, pr and provide the paper uh, for young people, the middle, the higher middle grades and middle schools, uh, senior citizen homes, community mm -hmm. centers, retirement mm -hmm. homes. Right. It's a perfect situation where a group of people would get together and come out within uh, five or ten minutes. Wow, wow. how wonderful. Contributing to the millions that we're going yeah. to be.
I would like to say thank you to Bill for joining us and for having such an interesting time. Please come again. And our next guest will be Nadia Giordana. And I'm the host of Woman Vision TV. It's a public access and internet television show. I'm having a lot of fun with that. Good. I'm glad to hear that. That sounds exciting. Will you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, it's uh, like I said, it's a public access and internet television show and the reason I call it both I do have some uh, time slots in the Minnetonka LMCC public access station mm. I think Tuesdays at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. and Wednesdays at 10:30 a.m. and p.m. and Thursdays at 7:30 a.m. and p.m. the time might be a half hour in there mm -hmm. but it's much more easily accessible through my website nadiajordana.com where viewers who might not have access to the, the channel there, which uh, they can go to the website and see the episodes all the time. Oh, They're beautiful. there continuously. Very, very interesting. How did you get started in this? In kind of a roundabout way. Oh, okay. A, a real roundabout way. Would you tell way. us a little bit how? <laughs> I will. Um, we can go back to 2006, and I was working in the corporate world, and mm -hmm got hit with the recession and the layoffs at that time yes. and fell, uh, <laughs> fell to, the, to the ax for the kind of things that were happening then. And I was 59 years old. I was uh, definitely overweight, feeling old, and I sat on my couch for a year mm -hmm. feeling sorry for myself and thinking, my whole life is over. I'm, t I'm too old to get started again. I'm too old to do this. I'm too old to do other things. And it doesn't take long before you realize, no, that's not true. That's not true. I can do some things. And the first thing that I did, which I still had no idea I was going to be doing a television show or anything like this, I needed to lose the weight. I needed to do that for my health, to feel better. Uh, afterwards, I realized what a sense of accomplishment I got from doing that. And mm -hmm. as an aside, I lost 88 pounds. So that's oh, a pretty big how deal. Wonderful. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's great. So in the wake of that, I'm feeling, feeling so powerful, feeling I can do this. I'm, I'm not too old to do anything that I might want to do. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I realized, what else can I do that would be a challenge. What else am I afraid of? What else have I never done in my life? And the next thing had to be public speaking and doing something where I could talk to the public. I've spent a lifetime with a paralyzing fear of public speaking. Oh, I wouldn't, I, cu I couldn't handle speech class in high school. I just froze and stood mm -hmm. there like, you know, like mm -hmm. you've seen people yes. do. <laughs> and um, so I decided that I would work on that challenge and I rolled with that. I, I did a couple of things at home with my own camera and some things good. for my websites mm -hmm. and then uh, I did some internet radio for a while oh. and that was fun. That was oh. fun and it was a good first step mm -hmm. because I could have my notes right mm -hmm. here. I, if my brain froze I have my notes right here and no one would see me checking my notes. I could read pretty well, so I, I got through that. And, you know, after about a year and a half, two years, that got to be a little boring. Oh. I thought, what? Now what can I do? <laughs> and then because I have such a love for the technical aspects oh. of this, I like being on the other side of the camera. I like mm -hmm. operating the cameras. I like being in the editing room and working with the editing programs. I don't know where that came from, but I wow. sure do enjoy it. <laughs> so I put those wow. things together. And, the, you know, the rest is history. <laughs> you know oh what I think gosh. is delightful about this is that I went on your website just this morning to mm -hmm. see what the newest, mm -hmm. newest situations were. And you were telling this very story mm -hmm. on your website. And I, I thought how it. perfect that she's going to come and do that here for us today so that our viewers can take a look at that too because they say and this is some kind of a statistic I don't know where it's from but the two greatest fears of most people number one the fear of dying mm -hmm. and number two the fear of public speaking absolutely so when you said you're afraid to be a public speaker you're one of the many mm -hmm. and and how do you get over that you know what do you do 
And it's like you said, you go out and do it. You go out and, and do, do it, it, and what you have to get over, at least for me, mm -hmm. the number one thing, mm -hmm. because there's no way that I could accomplish it or get past certain things by practicing in private. You could do a little bit, but you actually have to go out there mm -hmm. and make the mistakes. Mm -hmm. yes. And make the mistakes in front of people mm -hmm. and be okay with that. And mm -hmm. I made plenty of those. <laughs> what I think too is so important in that aspect is that that seems to be the main fear of people mm -hmm. is to make a mistake in public. And looking dumb. And, and looking dumb or whatever it looking might be. Looking whatever, whatever you and feel. Yes, and I had the greatest drama coach one time, Doug Anderson, say this to me when I had to go out. I was going to be in a show that he was producing. He wanted me to sing, and I'm not a singer. I can carry a tune in a bucket, that's about <laughs> it. And of all the songs, it was the Betty Boop, that boop boop ba doop thing. <laughs> that's cute. I had to memorize it. I had to learn mm -hmm. the song. I was scared to death. Mm -hmm. And you're so afraid of failing. Yes. Mm -hmm. And finally, when he realized this, this is the fear that was keep, kept coming up, he said, Jean, if you make a mistake, build it in. Okay. And I've done that ever since. You just build it in. Because if you make the mistake, and I don't know of any speaker or any performer who, doesn't. who hasn't, mm -hmm. yes. somewhere in their mm -hmm. life, they've made a mistake. Oh, yeah. sure. uh, it's, it's true. And you, you, when you think about it, you don't die because no. you made a mistake. That's right. You may have felt dumb, you may have felt embarrassed, you may yeah. have, but, but yeah. so what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The point is, you're out there speaking, so and you chances are, you'd love it. I, when I think of you now, yeah. I can't imagine you being afraid because you're so comfortable. Yes, it's fun now. It's, it's become fun, yes. It's like you said earlier, yeah. Diane, once you get that mic in your hand, we you have to fight to take it away. To take it away. <laughs> I'm Absolutely. not at that point yet. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I think that's wonderful. You have accomplished so much. <laughs> And I bet you're very proud of yourself, right? I, I am enjoying it, and it, uh, it does give me a sense of realization that it's never too late to get started never. with these things. Never. Absolutely. I think that's what's important. Yeah. I mm -hmm. agree 100%. Mm -hmm. wow. I know. The only reason why I quit being an employee is that I had to be working full time at the business I created when I was 65, and I was still working. And wow. I found that I can't go out and speak and do all these things and still have a, have a job. Impossible. So I had to make mm -hmm. the decision, do I quit sure. working mm -hmm. and try to do it full time? And like you said, of course you do. Yeah, you You've do. got the rest of your life, of you course do. you do. Of yeah, course you do. And I did. I have an 87-year-old mother mm -hmm. who comes from the old country and has a lot of talents. And one day we decided mm. what we were going to do. I've got the Woman Vision TV Where Women Talk program. And I thought, Mom, let's do some things with the recipes that you do, oh. the crafting that you do, Excellent. the quilting that you do, Excellent. and let's do it like a, a television mm -hmm. program. And she rolled right into it, never Didn't having you? ever been on a camera. <laughs> oh. We call it the Grandma Sylvia Show. Oh, That's online beautiful. at the same website. And she's a natural, better than I ever could have been in the very beginning. I, I'm so proud of her. Wonderful. And she's Absolutely. having a ball with it. Oh, it's Gosh. wonderful. And I think, you know, the, the, mm -hmm. uh, one, one of many messages you're giving to our audience, too, is that, you know, no matter what your age, try to think of what are the things you wish you could have done. Yes. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have been nice if I didn't yes. have to, if I could have done. Well, once you're retired, there's basically nothing stopping you from doing mm -hmm. what you Absolutely could have done. Absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. And That's you think, so well, I don't true. have the yep. money for that. I don't have the money for that. Well, you don't need money. No. Go volunteer. For no. most things, you don't you need don't. a lot of money. You're right. If there's mm -hmm. a skill you want to develop mm -hmm. or uh, something that you want to do, volunteering is fantastic. You get, for all, that. You get all that training for free. Yeah. You do. Just go you and do, do it. And it's completely. Great. It's the idea that you feel good when you are doing something that is you're volunteering. Mm -hmm. And especially mm -hmm. with some of the things I do, I'm working with children and I'm teaching them about uh, carnival and making sure that they, are, they get involved in it. Mm -hmm. They have fun with it. Mm -hmm. And it makes me happy. And by carnival, what she's talking about is the St. Paul Winter, Winter Carnival. Winter Carnival. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. carnival, yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and, and the women that I bring on the show, I, I have access to a f tremendous group of women, writers mm -hmm. and authors. It's fun to showcase them and the things mm -hmm. that they're doing for what are, whether it's for the community, for other women. Mm -hmm. And they get an opportunity too, and we have so much fun. And the new women that I've, I've met have become friends, so I oh, meet a whole lot of new friends wonderful. doing that. That's <laughs> great. 
It's a way to take care of it and, and just enjoy the people that you work with. Mm -hmm. Just like Jeannie and I have known each other for oh, quite a while. Long time. Mm -hmm. And that's how our friendship started. Mm -hmm. And now I know you guys. Yes, mm -hmm. I think that's <laughs> just wonderful. Mm -hmm. Somebody asked me about you just today and I said, well, I think we first met when you and I were both involved with, this, with the um, um, Pageants. Pageants. Senior, Senior America Senior Pageant. Senior America Pageant. That was going yep. on here in Minnesota. Right. And then you got overwhelmingly involved volunteering with okay. the St. Paul Winter Carnival. Because I started so that. that. Oh, you've been at that forever. I started with the Winter Carnival in 1945. Goodness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And don't count. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what gave me the fun feeling of being able to volunteer, just like you're saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now you've made friends forever, yeah. probably. Oh, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. I think that's absolutely yeah. great. Anything mm -hmm. else you would like us to know about you? Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's some of the most interesting mm -hmm. parts. It's, 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 it's overcoming mm -hmm. those obstacles and, and remembering that we're not too old to do these Thanks. things. You know, mm -hmm. we, sometimes people get to be over 50, over 60, over 70, and they think it's too late to try and, it's not. It's not. It's, yeah. it's just not, it's just not mm -hmm. ever too late. Mm -hmm. It's the fun of keeping busy and yeah. enjoying what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Just like I feel when I'm doing something like this, I think how wonderful and how lucky I am to be mm -hmm. able to do this. And I think one of the advantages too, and again for our audience to, to kind of get this idea, mm -hmm. Many times it's because of our quote advanced age yes. that we're being yes. as successful yes. as we are. Yes. I know when I go out and actually perform, right. people don't expect somebody, and I'll say this at 83, <laughs> to go out and be a performer. Mm -hmm. They just don't expect it. Mm -hmm. I'm older than many of the people I perform for. And when oh, they see you, they're yeah. delighted. They're delighted, yes. they're delighted, and they get the same idea. Right. You can do stuff mm -hmm. even though Right. Even the, so what? You're older. It inspires what people. What difference does that make? It does. You know. Well, when we have our, our big audience, which we fill the theater with, and there's four of us that do this, and we invariably have a little question and answer time. Mm -hmm. And it always happens to us. The four of us are on stage, and a little one will get up, and I'll say, okay, now hold your hand up. Now we can hear you. Let's make sure. How old are you? <laughs> we get it every time, and it's just a <laughs> laughing time. And then we tell them how old we are, and you hear this, really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's a fun time, an exciting time, and we enjoy so much things, as you are saying, exactly as you're saying. Yeah, it's fun to see their expressions oh. because their perception of age is so oh, different from ours. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. That's so true. Well, Nadi, I can't say how wonderful this was. It was great, it was exciting, and what you have done is making people happy and yourself. So thank you so very much for coming and we enjoyed it.